Hello again, Will Vincent with another one of our iRacing.com Pro Series interviews. This time with the driver of the number nine, Madwire Media, slash NewCarInVoltary.com, slash Last Row Motorsports Machine. It's Nicholas Moore. So my God, that is a handful to say. I feel, I feel bad for Tim Terry. Yeah, it's pretty tough. Whenever I uh, fill out the forms or do the interviews, I have to go through that every time. So I have a more practice than you, so I'm pretty decent at it now, but it's those are some long names for sponsors. Right, let's go through your Aries and career. You're kind of one of the old school guys, 2008. So you're, yeah. you're a gold star, five-year member now and all that stuff. Yeah, I've been uh, been around on iRacing for a while. Um, you know, the last, the last oval championship I guess I did was through VRW, which uh, Nim Cross ran. And I got a beta invite to iRacing after that ended, but I really couldn't commit to it. So um, did some road course stuff on Formula Sim Racing and R Factor. And then when I saw iRacing opening back up um, with the really entry level stuff, um, you know, the legends and the street stocks and those sort of things, uh, I signed up as soon as they had open membership. So, I mean, before that, you were on NASCAR 3, NASCAR 4, NASCAR 2 car. 2K3, that's the one. Yeah, 2003. Um, bit of our factor as well. iRacing, you've really seen iRacing grow and evolve from, you know, the NTM V1 all yeah. the way through getting the Gen 6 car now. Yeah. Everything. So what's, what's the experience been? Uh, it's been a long progression. You know, I remember we used to have to run um, multiple seasons at the same tracks. When I first started, it was... USA, um, I think there was a, a few other tracks in there, but we really only had four tracks to race at, and it was all in the Legends, Advanced Legends, and then the late model. Uh, it was really cool to see, you know, I remember when Charlotte came out, we had the late model and everyone was racing around there in the late model, we thought that was the coolest thing in the world. Then they put out the Silver Crown at Homestead, and we saw really good side-by-side -side racing there, and you know, it was just advancing through the ranks going through the licensing system um, before they had the fast track system. So you, you literally had to spend almost an entire season or two in, in each each car class. And um, I think the game has progressed a ton since I first started, you know, and, and every single car that we were driving before, you were turning, you know, 45 degrees to the right on corner entry and just trying to hold it there as best you can through the corner. Um, so I've, I've seen a lot of improvements. You know, the drafting used to be horrible. We have much better drafting physics, side draft. Um, the way the tires work now, it's been a huge progression. I, I love it a lot. I love racing here. And it's pretty neat to see um, all the improvements that they've made so far. You talk about having to race in a number of cars. And for those of you who are slightly newer to iRacing, there used to be a day where you'd get in a car. You'd be, I don't know, a classy. You'd be that for 13 weeks. And then if you're lucky, you get promoted. And you'd have to do it again and again. So rather than it being the case that you can be a Class A driver in two weeks, and I've seen it happen, and two weeks can be slightly optimistic, um, it used to be a case that it used to take you a year to get to Class A. And of course, along the way, um, looked in your bio, you ran in the 2010 iRacing.com Indy 500, um, which in many ways was like, alongside the DWC, one of your first big, big, big events. Yeah, I mean, running in the Indy 500 is really cool. Uh, that's something that I've always wanted to do. I really don't, uh, never, I really don't ever run in any car, Formula One cars, or even any road racing cars. I used to do it at the beginning of the service just because it was so monotonous, running the same thing all the time. But um, you know, my sponsor, NewCarInventory.com, um, Patrick Shelton, he has worked in IndyCar, worked in the Indy Light Series. Um, he's a marketing manager for a team right there right now. I think it's Alliance Motorsports or Fan First fan first United Motorsports right now. And so um, they always help me out. They give me some setup ideas and I get to bounce a lot of ideas off them in the Indy 500. I've never finished well on it, but I've been fortunate to make the top split. And um, that's always something I like to do just because it's a, it's a cool event, it's fun, and it's a, it's kind of a one-off event for me. And arguably the pressure of qualifying for the Indy 500 alongside yeah. the DWC has got to be the most yeah. stressful thing ever. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, the first time I did it, uh, I only, it, I started practicing three days before the, the cutoff and I was fortunate enough to make it. I put in a fluke lap. And then this last time I had a lot of help from the guys at LRM and um, Fanforce United and um, you know, newcarinventory.com. And I practiced for weeks and I barely, I, I didn't even qualify in the top 33. I qualified 37th, I think. And just because a few guys didn't show up, I, I was able to run the race. Let's talk about DWC, of course, because that's been your heritage, that the Pro Series. It's been a long and winding road for you since pretty much day one. Take us through it. 
Uh, you know, I definitely, I can't um, fault missing races on anyone other than myself. So it's, uh, it's definitely been a long and winding road. I think I've learned a lot along the way uh, where I can step out of bounds and get slapped or, you know, where I can stay in line and um, compete in a series and have fun. Uh, I was fortunate enough to make my first DWC start this year at Atlanta. Uh, I think I finished 13th. I, had a, I felt like I had a top 10 car, um, but I'm just a suck at pit strategy. So I kind of ruined that myself. And then, you know, um, I was fortunate to land Manwire Media as a sponsor. Um, you know, they watched some of the races, Michael Main performance, um, PC. Um, he works with Madwire Media. They heard about it, um, knew I was on iRacing, and then after that, they partnered with me. And then the bad thing is, is I've been in three UX <laughs> the next three races that I was in DWC. So I haven't really given um, them too good of a showing yet, but I've enjoyed my time there. I've been on and off in pro for three years, um, and I've had, good, I've had good finishes. I won four races in pro, and you know, the, I think like 15 or 16 races that I've competed in. And I'm looking forward to, you know, hopefully competing for the championship this year. I feel like the support system behind me is um, strong enough to give me a chance to run for the title. And I've definitely been putting in the laps to to get the finishes that I need. Tell you what, this year's Pro Series, it's ultra competitive. You've got a number of guys, of course, who didn't make the cut in the DWC, who are now running the Pro Series. A lot uh -huh. of guys have come up this year in season one, two, and three, all to making their journey to the Pro <coughs> Series. You've got a couple of your teammates there as well. Arguably, on both road and oval, this is the most competitive Pro Series we've ever had. I would agree. Um, I think, you know, the first Pro Series um, that I competed in, it was all DWC drivers just because there wasn't a DWC yet, and that one's pretty competitive. But the system was also a little different. We had the snake system back then, so um, the fields were slightly watered down because we had four races going at the same time. This one, you know, they definitely made it more competitive by only having one field going at a time, a limited number of spots. And then, like you said, with the back half of the DWC field, um, recompeting for their pro license. And a lot of them, it's none of their fault to their own. I mean, I run in DWC and I know you can have, you know, the fastest car and just get caught up in someone else's mess. And, you know, you string a few of those together and you're outside the top 20. So I think the field's very strong. It has a lot of drivers in it who also uh, only compete part time in DWC. And so that's why they're in pro. And I'm looking forward to the challenge. I think I think some guys will get washed out just because um, they're not used to racing in that sort of style. It's not about hot lapping and dive bombing. It's a different style of racing. But um, I think it's going to be very competitive and it should be a lot of fun. And in, in the DWC, you have you know, a couple of weeks where you are running race after race after race, but nothing like the Pro Series. 12 weeks. It's intensive racing. You've got to be your game every single Tuesday night. Uh, what can you do mentally, physically, and emotionally to prepare for such a series? I think mentally, I'm um, just got to keep my head cool. You know, Joey Brown has really helped me out a lot, staying calm. And um, the whole team's really been um, pretty heavy on me. And then, um, you know, landing two big sponsors has definitely been a, a big responsibility for me because, you know, with real money involved and, you know, a multi million dollar company like Madwire Media involved, um, that's definitely something I can't screw around with and, you know, lose my cool and take someone out. So, um, you know, mentally, I just got to stay focused. Emotionally, I got to keep my head in the game. And then um, physically, I got this super cool cockpit that I sit in now. I'm not at a kitchen table or anything like that anymore. So I'm going to be pretty comfortable. And um, I know the races are a little bit longer, but I've done long races before. I've been racing for 10, 11 years, raced in real life. So I think physically, I'll be fine to, to compete in that series. And let's talk about Last Row Motorsports. Um, you've been there, what, 18 months or so now? It's been interesting journey for them as a team and you know some new signings in the last six eight months or so and mm. that team is looking very strong coming into this pro series and potentially into 2014. yeah i think you know i think lrm um it was kind of a, a startup of multiple teams wanting the same thing you know it was a evolution of you know thunderstick five star a lot of other teams that had kind of um there was a lot of talent there was just no direction and, you know, um, one of the original founders, even though he's not in the team anymore, um, Brandon Cattell, he did a great job kind of formulating a good package and getting some guys in the right place. And even though he's not with the team anymore, he left, he's um, doing his own thing now. Um, the remnants of that, I think, became stronger. Um, we did have a little bit of a, a separation, you know, half the team split uh, in the middle of season two, which, um, you know, a lot of people expected to hurt us, but that actually made us a lot stronger. You know, Joey Brown, I think, went on like five or six straight polls in DWC. I made pro, I finished top five in points. Um, you know, Joey got a couple wins. We added Chris and Chris Overland, um, you know, he's sponsored by Menards. He got into the pro series as well. 
And then some of the guys that left came back, like Lee Heron and Peter. And, you know, Lee made pro, and Peter won the last race of the year. So I th it's been interesting, but I think the team is strong. We're very focused. Um, we consider ourselves professionals at this um, game that we play, and we do treat it as such. And so um, we're doing well. I think I definitely think we're a top-tier team. We can compete for championships. And now that we're all getting some experience under our belt at a higher level, um, we're getting some of the kinks out of the way that might have been a cause of some of the DNFs earlier in the year. And I think I think we're in a position to really compete for a championship in pro this season and in DWC next season with a couple of drivers. And when I was talking to Mr. Floppy Head himself earlier, yeah. he was commenting about the team chemistry and how he, you know, that was one of the drivers for him wanting to stay on board with LRM. And how important is it to have that chemistry, knowing that there is so much on the line? But knowing also it's not always going to be, you know, great fun. You are going to have to recover from, you know, two, maybe three drivers being taken out of a race, not having the race you wanted, not having the speed, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. You know, chemistry is everything in, in sim racing because we don't get to we don't get to meet each other or it's very rare for us to, you know, be in the same physical location. LRM is we've tried to do some meetups at the Las Vegas race, Iowa. Um, we have a lot of teammates on the East Coast that meet up quite a few times, like Charlie, Peter Lee, Landon, those guys. Um, they all meet up and they've met multiple times. And chemistry is real important because we spend so many hours a week together that if we don't get along, especially in the same space, um, we'd be very unsuccessful. Um, we did have a problem with that, and that was part of what was um, disconnected the team in season two. But we were able to remove those people who were causing problems or causing division. And like I said, I think the team's gotten a lot stronger. We get along great. Um, we're very productive in the time that we do spend online. And um, I would feel safe to say that we all consider ourselves friends on and off the track. Now, you will very happily call yourself outspoken. Yes. <laughs> um, how, I mean, how do you think, you know, your fellow iRacers portray yourself? And does that translate onto respect or angst in the racetrack or anything at all? Um, you know, I know how they, I know how they feel about me and it's definitely something I can't say in an interview, but it, it doesn't bother me. Um, you know, the friends that I have, I, I choose to associate with and the people who think I'm dirty or, you know, race them a little bit too hard. Um, it's always of their own doing. I've never, I've never intentionally started any confrontation on the track, but whenever someone's mouthed off to me in forums in private or in public or, um, you know, laid a fender to me on the track, I don't forget about it. And. I just make sure I, I even the score when I have the chance. Um, in terms of how it affects me um, in a race or in a championship, I don't think it'll it'll be negligible. Um, you know, Shannon and Nam have been very clear with me about uh, what's expected of me as a pro driver and the position that I'm in. So, you know, there'll be no retaliation, no intentional wrecking. I won't even trade a layer of paint this season. Um, you know, pro is not the end. Pro is the means to the end. You want to get in DWC. Um, winning pro is great. You know, I don't discount anything that the guys who've won the pro championship have done. That's a big deal. But, um, it, you know, the goal is to be in the top 20, not to get in a bunch of fights and simply wreck yourself out of it. But um, I don't, I'm not going to change how I drive. I'm not going to change how I speak to people or um, how people treat me and how it's reciprocated. But um, I think I'll be fine on the track and there won't be any um, intentional law breaking by me this year in any way, shape or form. You talk about how it's the top 20 that's important and I was talking to Chris as well earlier that the scoring system for the NASCAR Pro Series means that you've got to be consistent and you know yeah you might be able to dive it down the inside on the final lap and make a pass to win yeah. get it wrong you you know you'll finish 15th maybe 20th and all of a sudden yeah. you've lost all those points how much does that play in your mind especially come mid-season the back end of the season yeah. when it comes down to you know you having to stay focused on that overall end goal rather than just one maybe two positions that you gain in the last couple laps yeah i think that's very important you know um, i'm very happy that i racing they built in two drops um for the pro series um so i think it's it's important to to keep the focus on the big picture and if i'm in position to win the championship I'm not going to you know, be lax about it. I'm definitely going to try to win it. But um, I think the focus for me this season and in, in pro is obviously I want to finish all the laps, stay on the lead lap, um, compete for top fives every race, which I feel confident that I can do. And then make sure I'm not putting myself in any bad positions. You know, some of the trouble that I've gotten in, 
um, I've been a little bit too aggressive or trying to pass in zones where um, it's not it's not you know the best decision in general, and I'm putting a competitor at risk. And you know that's part of the part part of the reason why people race me the way they do. So I think this season, um, you know, we have multiple grooves that we can compete on. Um, you can hold people off just fine outside. There's side draft. There's all these features that are now in the game that make it a lot easier to race people. And so um, I definitely got to keep that in mind. And you know, if I'm if I'm a little bit faster than someone, I'm not going to dive bomb them and get incident points and risk not you know being eligible for the next couple of races. Just gotta you know essentially if I can get. 12 top 20s, I'll be in the top 20. So that's how I need to look at it. And everything ahead of 20th place, I should be, you know, happy with. And let's talk about your favorite race. What has been your favorite race since you've been on iRacing? Uh, uh, God, that's a, a probably about five or six. Um, I, obviously, all my pro victories, I'm very proud of. Um, you know, winning in the pro series is a big deal. And I'm very fortunate to have done that. And even though um, I, you know, I won at Indy, which is a big deal to me. I've won at Talladega, which I just got lucky. Everyone wrecked. And then I won at Darlington twice, which I was pretty happy about. Um, I wish I could. I wish the results for the Daytona 500 were different. I felt like I had won that one. <laughs> that um, was amazing. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that's something I still regret, and I'm definitely going to go back next year and um, try to win it outright. And then um, my first DWC race, um, that was a big deal for me. You know, I waited since 2008 to do that. And then after coming off uh, being ineligible for such a long time, um, I was extremely happy to be in DWC. And then my first race with Madwire, you know, um, landing that big of a sponsor and having people who support me and, you know, they show the videos in the morning meetings and they show recaps of the races. Um, being being associated with them at, at Kansas was a really big deal. And I felt like I was one of the fastest cars out there. And um, there was just a wreck in front of me and it's just a chain reaction and I got wrecked um, running at fifth, fifth or fourth place. Um, so multiple races for me make me pretty happy. Um, but I really can't narrow it down to one except for those, those five or six. You know that Daytona race is our most viewed race and they are still commenting about it. Yeah, I, I've seen that. It's, it's pretty neat to be involved with something like that. Um, you know, I, Benjamin did a great job and um, so did Kenny, you know, Kenny and I had worked together a long time. I've been racing with Kenny since the Arca Sim racing days. And, um, you know, I even went to the Arca Sim racing team, even took me out to Toledo for an Arca race and I got to meet all the guys out there. Um, so I thought Kenny was going to stick with me. He told me he was going to stick with me and then out of turn four, he got some air in my right rear fender and slowed me down. And I'd even see Benjamin coming. And, uh, it's neat that it's had so many views. I'm happy to be associated with it, but I definitely want to win it next year. And Let's talk about what you do off the racetrack. What ticks your boxes? Uh, you know, honestly, sim racing is number one. Um, currently, I'm rehabbing my ACL on my right leg. Uh, I blew that out last year playing football and team handball. So I love to do those things. And then, um, you know, I'm a marketing executive for Madwire Media right now. And, you know, I love, love working with the programs that they have. Outside of that, um, I really don't have much of the free time because I'm also getting my master's in business, business administration. So my schedule is pretty full right now, um, but I'm pretty happy with the things that I have going. And, you know, whenever I graduate and finish rehabbing, I'll definitely have a little more time on my hands. What position do you play? I play quarterback. Come on, give me, give me, give me. I'll do one if you do one. Give me a call. A call for what? Just give me a play call. Uh, God, it's been a while. All right, let's go um, Twins Right Jet 2711. That's one of our basic plays. Now do it with a bit of um. That is, I mean, I'm pretty calm. You got to stay calm as a quarterback. I don't really scream or yell. Um, I don't get anyone's faces. Um, but twins are right, Jet 2711. Bad again. Your left side receiver is running a slant. Your slot guys coming in motion across the field are running a corner. Your two outside guys are running five yard outs. And who's your team in the NFL? Uh, Denver Broncos for sure. I won't comment on last Sunday. Yeah, they need to hire some new refs. I was pretty upset about that game. It, it was it was an entertaining game, but I'll give you that. The, yeah. yeah, I you know I, I, I respect the Colts, but um, those refs were garbage. That's all I can say about that. And I think Ursay's mind game is fine. I, I, I honestly have to say, I mean, I was thinking before the match, it was actually all going to be on lock. The fact, you know, that good old Big Peyton's coming back. In. Yeah. Luck's not played well under pressure, but I think Ursay finally got into Peyton's head. He? I don't think he got into Peyton's head at all. I think Andrew Luck is just maturing. It's only his second year, and he did take him to the playoffs last year as a rookie. 
Um, and I think I think Andrew Luck is a great quarterback, and um, yeah, I think he showed it. So um, he's done well at Stanford. You know, he almost won the Heisman a couple of times, and he now beat Peyton Manning, who the person he was is replacing, and now you can say he has replaced him. So I think he's doing a good job, and um, the Broncos will keep on rolling against everyone else. And we'll probably see you again at mile high come the championship game. Yeah, probably. Um, that'd be pretty interesting if um, they both play against each other in the AFC championship, and hopefully the outcome's a little bit different. We'll, we'll talk about iRacing, shall we, a little bit more? Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, you've got all these sponsors, of course. You've got a great team underneath you. Um, it does sound as though you are just looking forward to 2014 um, DWC. I'm going to call it WCS. I'm going to use a technical term. Yes, yeah. WCS. Um, how much are you looking forward to on the assumption that you you know you get through to the 2014 WCS to being on PSR TV, having Tim Terry call your action, being right there in the spotlight on what is still a hugely growing um, you know sports broadcast sim racing. Let's not forget. Three years ago, you really only had PSR TV, RTV. Now you've got Glacier TV, you've got ETV, you've got iRacing Brazil, you've got ARL TV, all the other ones that I apologize for not naming. But yeah. it's growing dramatically. More people are watching it every single week, and you could well be a part of it. Yeah, I, yeah I'm definitely looking forward to it. Um, I'm, I'm not worried about the Pro Series at all. I know I can finish in the top 20 um, unless people T-bone me and, you know, by cutting the corner every single time. I think I'm going to be fine. Um, so, you know, being a part of that next year will be great. I'm really looking forward to it. And it has exploded a lot. You know, they're on the New England Sports Network, um, Fox Sports Brazil, like you mentioned, MRN, NASCAR.com. And then, you know, the news wire is carried by a lot of other sources outside of, you know, the, the video productions that we do get to see. Um, even Yahoo has covered, you know, the DWC series every, almost every single race this year. And that's really cool to see iRacing and the feed for, you know, Yahoo Sports. Uh, so I'm definitely excited to be a part of it. I think it'll be great exposure for both my sponsors, New Car Inventory and Madwire, and they're they're excited to be a part of it too. Um, you know, Madwire is definitely a new sponsor, and they're a um, top placement ad CPC SEO firm, and they're definitely exploring their options here. And, and um, because of, like I said, the low barrier to entry for them to get involved with something like this, and to have the branding of a NASCAR logo um, that they can now associate with, it's it's a good deal for them. And um, New Car Inventory has been with me for. Um, a little bit longer, um, Patrick, like I said, Patrick Shelton, um, he's been with me for a little bit longer and he loves it too because now he can use a, a Gen 6 Chevrolet and all the you know direct mailers that he sends out and those sort of things and also associate himself with NASCAR and the iRacing logo. So I'm definitely excited to be there. Um, I'm hopeful that I can continue to provide the, the exposure that these guys partnered with me to get and I'm looking forward to it next year. Well. We'll leave it there. Um, that is Nicholas Morse in the, I'm going to get this right, number nine, Madwire Media slash newcarinventory.com slash last whoops. Close, uh, I messed it up. I'm going to start again. There we are. It's Nicholas Morse and number nine, Madwire Media slash newcarinventory.com slash last row motorsports machine. Tim Terry, I'm going to say this right now. I'm glad I don't have to say that every race. Um, but good luck in the upcoming pro season and we'll probably talk to you again a little bit soon. Bye. Thank you.